Psy Access, May 10, 2024. USAID Global Health. Programming, hiring, and reasonable accommodation. Maury Mendenhall. Uh, hello, my name is Maury Mendenhall, and I go by she, her. I'm a white female, very short hair. Um, I work for USAID. That's the U.S. Agency for International Development. I say we're the little sister of the State Department. We focus, you know, specifically on providing uh, funding and resources and support and programs to countries that need that kind of support. And I focus specifically on the Bureau of Global Health in the Office of HIV AIDS. I, I focus on uh, children orphaned and made vulnerable by HIV AIDS. Oh. Perfect. That looks great. And so um, can you just go to the next slide? There's, um, I'm just going to let you all at your convenience, um, you can just go ahead and learn more about USAID and all the things that that global health does. It's a pretty wide, um, uh, it's a pretty wide kind of collection. You can go to the next slide. USAID, um, we have many, many bureaus. I've kind of pointed out where the Bureau of Global Health is. We do um, lots of sciencey things. So I think that's why we thought this might be of interest to you all. You can go to the next slide. And um, these are some of the different offices within the Bureau of Global Health. So you can see what kind of aspects of, of health that we really focus on. And you can go to the next slide. But mostly I just, um, since you all are um, probably know much more about health than I do, I wanted to make sure that you knew ways to uh, access um, opportunities to work for USAID. Um, I feel like USAID is, is a very um, a wonderful place to work for, for people with disabilities. I have a disability, I have aphasia and um, have found that, um, this is uh, uh, that th that this is a, a place that's um, that's very kind to people with with disabilities, very supportive. Um, it's not easy to uh, to to join careers with with USAID, um, but there are lots of different options. And I, I wanted to make sure, if you aren't aware of this already, that um, that there are ways that we are we are really um, actively trying to recruit people with disabilities. And quite a few people at USAID do have disabilities, but we're certainly not at the we haven't met our targets, and so we're always trying to recruit more. Um, there are lots of people that are uh, kind of hired um, specifically as uh, kind of full-time employees, but I would say within the Bureau of Global Health, maybe about half of us are government employees. I'm a civil servant. Um, I was at one point a um, federal, uh, uh, sorry, a um, foreign service officer, but um, most of us just start as consultants and then we kind of move up. You can go to the next slide. So um, Schedule A, I don't know how much you all know about this. The best place to uh, kind of look for jobs with the U.S. government is through, um, it's, sorry, it's, it's USA jobs. It's not USAID jobs. So I wrote that incorrect, incorrectly. Um, but when you're there, you can look around and find what sorts of things interest you. You can identify yourself as a person with disabilities, and then you will get some, um, you will be kind of prioritized to some extent. There are also ways that you can apply apply through um, uh, through schedule a there are um, but you you kind of have to go through a process again you can do all of that through um, USA jobs and um, and once you uh, provide inform you have to to uh, provide some sort of indication about you know um, that you do have a disability you don't have to be specific about what kind of disability that is um, but but once you've gone through that process, then you will also be part of a um, uh, repository. And um, and I will say that that people at USARD are not very aware of that repository. I don't think that you can just guarantee be feel guaranteed that um, people will look for your um, uh, for your applications within that roster. You really do need to be aggressive and kind of go through USA Jobs and the way that everybody else would. But uh, if you identify yourself as a person with disability, you will get priority. And there's a wonderful woman at USAID named. Um, 
Milana um, Pilko. And she, uh, if you have any further questions about Schedule A or really anything related to how to get a job as someone with disabilities, she's the person to talk to. You can go to the next slide. So um, I wanted to also let you know that in addition to these government jobs, there are lots of opportunities to join the US government and specifically global health through consultancies. And so right now we have um, uh, an organization um, here that is um, uh, probably where we get, you know, 50% of our, our global health staff. And uh, these are sometimes short-term positions, sometimes longer-term positions. I will say once you start there and you become kind of a known quantity within uh, the Bureau of Global Health, there, there are often other more secure jobs that are available and you can just move up into those. Next. Uh, there are also opportunities for fellowships and for internships. So I listed a bunch of these here. There's one that I just learned about today that that's not included, but it's specifically on science. It's a, um, a science fellowship. And so I'll try to make sure that that's available to you all as well. Um, these are positions that most people don't know anything about. So it's a great opportunity to just kind of find these little secret ways to get into USAID. Next slide. And then um, I also, I'm sorry, I'm realizing that the, the, um, the, this is a kind of an older slide. So there's, I provided a little more information about different ways that I have gotten um, uh, um, reasonable accommodations. Again, you know, everything within the U.S. government takes a long time. It was a, a kind of a long process, but I got lots of support from my um my supervisor and members of my of my team and my doctor, um, but uh, and it was hard for me to figure out initially. I um, had a new disability. I wasn't quite sure what I needed in order to kind of get what I what I needed. But um, and I'm not sure that that the my rehabilitation. Um, sorry, the um, the reasonable accommodation folks necessarily knew what I needed with aphasia either. But um, but I got much more support from the Pentagon. Um, so the different parts of USAID do send people to the Pentagon as well. And they have lots of different ways that you can try out different um, accommodation and, and figure out what is, is most helpful for you. Okay, I think that's it. So I'm, I'm just going to stop right there and see if anyone has any questions. And if no one has questions, I can keep talking. Thank you so much. So we do have one question um, in the chat right now from um, Enchika asking about being an undergraduate with electronics and communication and wanting to do a master's in aeronautical engineering, um, who's looking for ways to gain experience. Yeah, um, Dad, that's a great question. So, I mean, if you're still um, in school, then I think there are lots of different opportunities. Some of, most of them are paid, some of them are unpaid. So um, I don't know if this, if these slides are just going to be available to you after this presentation, but there's lots and lots of, of different um, links in there. So um, I would, I would encourage you to apply for absolutely everything. And um I wish that I were, I think you have kind of a, a different area of expertise than I do, and I would hire you in a heartbeat, but that's not really kind of my area of, uh, of, of, that's not really what I work on. But I imagine that there are others, but you also might look into, um, you know, other parts of the U.S. government. Um, all of us really should be very accommodating and, um, I, again, wish I knew more about some of these other parts of the U.S. government, but, um, but I, I think that probably our systems are, are fairly similar. Thank you. We also have a question from Joanne asking if there is a special path for U.S. Peace Corps or America Corps. Oh, yeah, a special path. That's interesting. Um, well, if you've, you've gone through both of those already, then you um, you probably have like two or three years of service with the U.S. government, and so that is that is some advantage as well. Um, you have a background, and um, and so that does make things easier. I imagine that you know that there are um, 
if you wanted to work for Peace Corps, that there are um, always seem to be opportunities to work for Peace Corps, but only for a very short period of time. So I think it's what, like five years. But again, that's a way to become kind of a known quantity and, um, and reach out to other parts of the U.S. government that you might be interested in. I work with a lot of, of, of Peace Corps people in my office that are, um, that are doing similar health work. And so um, it's been great to work with them, but again, they only stick around for about five, five years. And then one more question from Joanne um, asking, where is the uh, link, I think to the USAID fellowship? Oh, to the fellowships, the different fellowships. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that this goes out to you and I'll make sure that it's my, um, my newest version. So it, it includes that new um, science fellowship as well. And I think you'll probably, I, I, I've tr I'll try to include the links. Um, if I can't, then I would just say, take that, um, it, just look on the internet for, for that kind of information for USAID and the different fellowships and the different um, internships and opportunities but they should all be there somewhere. Um, and I, the, the one challenge is they kind of open at different times. So um, once you go there, kind of figure out when they're made available and then just keep your eyes open. Excellent. Thank you so much. Great. Are there, are there any other resources you would like to share with attendees? I'm looking forward to working with you. Excellent. Yeah. Love ending I mean, on a positive note. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, you, the Bureau of Global Health is trying to do much um, more kind of general work on, on trying to integrate disability into uh, our programming right now. Something that I think that we, <laughs> we there's a lot of room for improvement. And um, I think people with dis disabilities should not have to only work on disabilities, but it certainly is handy when someone who kind of understands the different challenges that some of our clients might be facing can, can help us think about that too. So I think that you all are, you know, really fantastic resources for us. And there are a million different reasons we should be hiring you. Sci Access. Learn more at www.sciaccess.org.